Hey everyone, I'm so excited to be here. It's been a couple of weeks, I know. Well, I have been busy hosting a workshop in Florida and it was the workshop uh, called Once Upon a Steampunk Time for Deb Wood and uh, was there for three weeks. One week to prepare, one week for workshop and one week to clean up. But I'm back and uh, looking forward to bringing you more guests and um, just uh, excited to be here. Now, a lot of you have uh, been on the Facebook group and as you know, artist to artist had to move and we are now at MeWe.com. So I'm gonna give a shout out. Hi, Katie, Sandy, good morning, Kay. Sandy. Kay, great to see all of you here. And here is Jana. Jana's sitting in the green room waiting to come on. Let's see, Fredo. Hi, Fredo. Thanks, Guy. Gabriella, thanks for being here. It's so good to see everyone. So if you haven't had a chance uh, to look at our new group, which we are in MeWe, it's very similar to the setup of Facebook. You just have to set up a profile and look for our group that says Artist to Artist, and I will get you right in there. And so far, we have a nice group in there, so I look forward to seeing you there. So I am not going to hold this up. I know you're anxious to meet Jana, and I'm going to bring Jana up, and she'll be on in about two seconds. Hey, Jana, how are you? I'm good. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we have a lot of visitors uh, here. Esther Menza and Gabriella. I don't know if you can see any of these names on your side. I can. Okay, well, we have a, a big shout out to all of these uh, guests that are coming in. Well, it's great to have you here, Jana. And uh, we've been looking forward to having you as a guest and to tell us a little bit about Stampington and Company. Um, <clears throat> I think that a lot of the uh, guests would like to know something about the history of Art Doll uh, magazine. Can okay. you tell us a little bit about it? I sure can. Um, I've been doing Art Doll for about nine years, and it started out in um, one of our flagship magazines is called Somerset Studio, and it's uh, mixed media artwork. And we had a challenge in Somerset Studio for Art Dolls. And it was so well received that our publisher, um, Kelly Gilloff, decided that an entire magazine needed to be devoted to art dolls. So uh, we started Art Doll in um, 2003. And so this is our 15th year. And it's, uh, it's a great fun magazine. I love it. Well, it is. And it's well received, Anna. I know a lot of people just love it. And it's just so professionally well done. I know that you get a lot of requests for people to get uh, their work submitted. And um, now that I'm talking about this, how do they go about getting their work published in ADQ? Okay, well, we have um, quite a submission process. Actually, magazines start, we start about between four and six months ahead of the release date. And that's when we set the deadlines for the artwork to come in. And basically every issue has um, a challenge in it and then a show and tell gallery and lots and lots of feature articles. So doll artists are welcome to submit um, feature article queries. Just send us ideas for what you might want to see in the magazine, um, always along with images of artwork. And the show and tell section, we feature 15 to 20 dolls and we, you know, there's no major criteria for show and tell other than it's like just a big gallery. Um, other than, of course, it has to be a, a beautiful doll, well executed. Um, you know, it can't, it has to show that your craftsmanship is of top notch quality. And Kelly has always insisted on showing the best of the best in the show and tell gallery, as well as the whole magazine. Um, yeah. the, I'm sorry, did you have a question? No, no, I'm just oh. listening. <laughs> okay, the challenge. Um, the challenges started out, out well, many years before I took it over, they had challenges occasionally. And then it seemed to me that so many artists, they loved having challenges because it got them excited, gave them something to strive for, they could try new, new techniques. So we went ahead and ended up doing challenges in every issue. 
And that's kind of like the show and tell section, the best of the best. And we get, um, oh man, we can, you know, get into the hundreds of submissions for different challenges, depending on what it is. Um, the particular challenge that we have coming up in the August issue is Haunted Fairy Tales. And that's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So, um, but we've just, we've had all kinds of different challenges, black and white challenge, tiny dolls, self-portrait dolls. I think it gives the artist a good chance to try something new and different. So when um, a submission is sent in, um, our art management coordinator unwraps it and we really hope that it is well packaged because sometimes things fall off, um, fingers break, you know, a lot of things can go wrong. Um, so because of that reason, we've gone to a lot of online submissions. So we encourage artists to send in high-res images, um, 300 DPI, um, 8 inches by 10 inches. And that can be done by hiring a professional photographer. Or um, I have a wonderful article that I can mail anybody that has a question um, that was written by our director of photography. And she goes through the criteria of how to shoot your own art dolls. So a lot of people prefer to do that rather than send in the physical submission because it can break. Um, however, the flip side of that is it's always better to see the doll in person than an image. But, um, you know, honestly, sometimes um, the images are so amazing and the doll just has that wow factor that, right. um, you know, we just know. So, um, so once all the submissions come in, um, they're all unpacked, very you know, carefully unpacked and labeled. And um, I put them out on a, the lobby of our building. It's got a bunch of big tables. So they're all set out there. Um, and I kind of categorize them. Um, what I think would be article worthy, what would be challenge dolls, and then what are show and tell dolls. And there's kind of a um, yes, no, maybe um, selection that, that I do initially. Um, and, you know, so it either absolutely, yes, this has got to be considered and shown to the publisher for um, publication consideration. Um, the other ones, oh, maybe it's really good, but I, I don't know, you know, if, it, if it's quite up to her standards. Um, and then the third one is, no, not quite yet. I think maybe this artist needs a little more work. So take a few more classes, learn some more techniques, but get in there because it's fabulous. Um, so that happens. And then... Um, then we have an art selection meeting with the publisher, the director of publishing, and the designer. And we go through and fine tune everything. And the publisher, um, you know, gives her, her stamp of approval to the ones that she wants in the magazine. Yeah. Um, that's, well, we, that, that. That, that, that's real interesting. What about when they, um, they submit the article? How many words do you, do you expect for them to send in? Or do you have somebody interview them for the article part? Um, for the most part, we ask our artists if they'd be willing to write the article for us. Um, mm -hmm. and so that that's a twofold. First of all, then it's written from their point of view. And um, secondly, they get paid for it. So oh, okay. if somebody's not real comfortable with um, writing, you know, we certainly offer editing and, you know, grammar checks and all that. So that's not a problem. Um, most articles are between, I would say, 800 and 1,000 words. Sometimes they run over, and if they run over, um, you know, that's okay. Um, the only thing is that um, you have to remember that there's a lot of different articles and departments and things that go into the magazine. So um, you're sharing that, that real estate space with other, you know, people that want to be on the pages. And right. so the more words you write, um, the less room we have for the images of your dolls. And obviously we want to show that, you know, the beautiful artwork. So um sometimes it's hard because there's a lot to say and you want to tell every little thing about the inspiration and the technique and um thank a million people and i get all that but it has to be condensed as much as possible so we can show the beautiful pictures of the dolls right i understand uh -huh. and i noticed sometimes in uh, your magazine also you have uh, where people will submit tutorials um along with an article now how does that work basically the same way Right, the same way pretty much, um, you know, just send an article query, um, you know, saying that you want to um, show a tutorial on, um, you know, for instance, cloth-based painting. And mm -hmm. then 
the best thing to do for that is to send, you know, just like a little art outline of what your idea is. And always things have to be supported with images so we can see what you're talking about. And, and with a tutorial, a lot of times we might do like, um, you know, maybe a grid and we label, you know, figure one and figure two, and then we, you know, step out the steps on it. So, um, and of course, everything has to be clear and understandable. So the reader knows what you're trying to get across. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just curious about that. I know sometimes in the in the magazines, uh, you do have tutorials. Mm -hmm. Also, um, what is the timeline? Are you just taking submissions all the time? Or is there certain deadlines that you require for submissions? Uh, to be we do have, um, let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to my cheat sheet here because um, I do more than just Ardell Quarterly. Most of us at Stampington manage several different publications. Right. So um, we have to keep a lot of things straight in our head. Um, so for the, um, let me see here, hold on a second. For the November issue, the deadline is four months ahead of that. So that is, um, okay. oh, hold on, um, June 15th. Okay. Um, the February issue is September 15th, May issue is December 15th, and okay. August is March 15th. And that's, it's printed in the magazine in the back of the book where we have the submission guideline information. Also okay. available online at um, www.stampington.com or just okay. www.artdellquarterly.com. Right. Yeah, I'm going to uh, post all of these links in the uh, comments once we um, the, the interview is over. And I'll also check out the dates and post them in the comments. So for okay. those who uh, want to, you know, uh, hopefully submit something. I also want to mention uh, for our viewers, if you have any questions for Jana, please feel free to post them. And Jana said that she will answer them as best as possible. So, um you know, feel free to post your questions. I also wanted to ask you if, um, let's say, if they are not wanting to enter a full article into the main part of the magazine, tell us a, a little bit about your show and tell area, which uh, seems to be very popular with a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, the show and tell area, like I said, is kind of like just a, you know, gallery on paper. Uh -huh. And... Um, all it would require would be submitting either the doll physically or submitting an image. And the information that's always needed is the name of the doll and the, the dimensions. Mostly we just publish the height of the doll, but if it's a, you know, kind of a longer, you know, a figure laying down or spread out, then um, the height and width and depth. Um, the inspiration for the doll, because it's always fun to know what, um, inspired a particular doll, if there was a situation in the artist's life, if they're just, you know, taking a character that they want to, um, you know, turn into a doll. Um, so that would be important. And then brief technique. We don't, this is where we don't go into like really super detailed information about it, but, you know, we want to know if it's, you know, a cloth doll or made out of polymer clay or carved wood, um, some of the tips and tricks you might have made to, to get to the final um, beautiful art. Um, right. so that's, um, and then of course the artist's name, always, um, your physical address because everybody who's published in the magazine gets a copy, a complimentary copy of it. Um, hopefully you're a subscriber, but if you're not, you will get a copy of it and then, uh, email any you know, contact information that we'd need to get in touch with you. Okay. Um, all of these, uh, uh, specs that you're offering and so far as submission, whether it's show and tell or uh, the regular art doll quarterly, uh, is that applied to any of your other uh, publications? Because, uh, Jenna, I have some people that are in the group that are doing like uh, painting and mixed media, and they may submit at maybe not necessarily art doll quarterly, but they may submit to the other magazines. Now, is this the right. same process that would go through? Yep, um, same process, and we have, um, gosh, we have so many titles, I couldn't even spill them all off, but, um, <laughs> you know, we, we have the Somerset Studio, which is mixed media, we have Art Quilting Studio, 
Um, we have a fun magazine called Mingle, which is all about like party planning. Um, oh, golly, Altered Couture. Um, we've got Bella Grace, which is a new publication, which is more of a um, kind of a mindfulness um, lifestyle publication. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're doing, we're, we're entwining a lot of the, um, the crafting magazines with the lifestyle magazines and they're really, really popular. So, but yep, the same submission process is um, called for, you know, you send in your submission either physically or by email and send the same criteria. And again, all of this information is on our website. Um, okay. Some publications like the, the ones that take digital images go into a little more detail about the high res images and how to um, work with your camera and upload them and all that. So, okay. That's uh, it's really uh, helpful information. I know uh, a lot of the artists shy away from submitting because they're just not really familiar with what they need to submit and what your selection process yeah. is. And I know one of the questions that always comes up is, um, how do you get on the front cover? <laughs> that's, always a, that's always a big question. You know, I wish, I hope I make the front cover. How does that work, Jana? Oh, golly. Well, you know. I have that magazine right here. <laughs> um, that beautiful doll is by Cindy Moyer, and um, we've published a lot of her work. She's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, the that doll, the article that goes with that doll, she wrote um, a beautiful article about um, dolls that were inspired by friends that she's had throughout life. And um, it's really, really pretty. This particular issue that you see up there is our May issue our um summer issue so that okay. should be at a new stands on you know barnes and nobles um joanne michaels a lot of smaller craft stores and also always available at our website so um but the cover <clears throat> excuse me when we do the art selection process sometimes there's just a doll that we just know in our heads is is going to be a contender for the cover um okay. And that was the case with this one. Um, actually, and this this is a good good example because this particular doll um, was not a physical doll that we had in our offices, so it wasn't shot in house. It was you know we worked with Cindy's images, and um, you know she's such a professional. Everything she does is is top notch. So all her images were fabulous. And um, sometimes when we look at an image for the cover, um, <clears throat> it has to be kind of facing in such a way that there's room to get the cover lines on yeah. and I know people probably would never think of that but that's really important we you know if, if there's like a doll that's like all spread out and you know take up all the room on the cover you know yeah we could use it but we'd have to like you know shrink the image down so much that you couldn't see the doll so um, a lot of times it's single images once in a while we've done um, multiple ones but um, you know I, I want to go back to that wow factor because um, and you know this, Adele, from a sales and marketing point of view, that um, you know we want to have something so beautiful on the cover of Art Doll that when somebody sees it, you know, 20 feet away on the newsstand, they they go, oh wow, and they run over and pick it up and buy it. So um, so it has to just be a phenomenal, beautiful doll. Um, we've had all kinds of interesting dolls on the cover, but um, yeah, that one's really pretty. Yeah, that one is, uh, yeah, and it, it's, it fits the summer. You know, for the yeah. summer you know, and that's that. something else we take into consideration, too, is, um, you know, we don't want to put something too summery on. Um, for instance, this, the next one that's going to be the Halloween issue, it's mm -hmm. almost, you know, guaranteed that there'll be some kind of Halloween-ish doll on the cover, so. Right. Well, it's just, uh, it's been a wonderful magazine, and I think you said it, it's been around, what, 15 years? No, longer than that. 15. Fifteen. Yeah, one five. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's just been a uh, a wonderful uh, magazine, and I know everybody looks forward. And it comes out quarterly uh, for those that are not familiar with it. And um, <clears throat> I also wanted to mention that we had uh, there's another area that uh, I wanted to tell everybody because we've been doing the artist to artist, and it's all about sales and marketing. I also write an article in Art Doll Quarterly, <clears throat> the business of art dolls that um, 
I've been writing an article, I guess, what, for five years now, maybe six? I don't know. I've lost track of time. Um, yeah, so it's been a while. I've been uh, doing this to help uh, artists learn a little bit more about sales and marketing. And uh, thanks to Jana, I was able to, to do this uh, starting several years ago. And um, it's been a lot of fun, and a lot of people have learned uh, quite a uh, few tips uh, from that. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to mention is um, <clears throat> to, uh, to thank you, Jana. I wanted to tell you that um, I did see I did see the magazine that came in the other day and was just excited to see Claire on there in the show and tell area. And I appreciate you post you publishing her. Thank you. Welcome. So um, I'm seeing here if there's any questions. Um, I'm looking real quick. I think everybody's kind of quiet today. So, um, what I'm going to do, Diana, is I'm going to go ahead and post uh, the upcoming challenges. Can you tell us a little bit more of that again? Sure. The um, the winter edition, which comes out in November. The okay. challenge for that is a Burton-inspired holiday. Burton. So kind of Tim Burton-ish. Okay. So, you know, just inspired, and that's kind of loosely, you know, um, okay. to give, give the artist, a, I don't know, an idea to go by. So um, June 15th is the deadline for the November issue. Okay. And the spring issue is the Roaring Twenties. Okay. Um, which should be a lot of fun. <laughs> so that's a February release, and the deadline for the artwork is February 15th. Okay. September 15th. September. Uh, September 15th. Okay. September 15th, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and post those dates in the comments once we're uh -huh. through the uh, okay. review here. Um, I really am so excited that you have come on because I know there was a lot of artists that wanted to meet you in person. Uh, I know that you have been you have been with uh, Stampington for how long? How long have uh, you been? I've been with Stampington for thirteen years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that uh, you you've met and you've become friends with a lot of artists, and uh, I know they're excited to. And get to meet you in person, which is really nice. This, this talk shows is an opportunity, right? I, you know, when I started at Stampington, it, it was kind of funny because um, at that time I was just my kids were in um, early college, and I was putting together a scrapbook for my son. Um, I just, you know, stay at home mom. I was doing some writing from home. I had written a column for a, a newspaper in South Dakota which is where we lived before we moved here. Um, mm -hmm. So I was working on that. And more, more or less, I just was at home and doing stuff on the side like that. And I decided to put a scrapbook together for my son, Jason. And I went online and I was looking for supplies and this company popped up called Stampington. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of them. And they, I went to their website because they have an online store and they sell all kinds of crafting things. Um, and there was a little, um, little bubble on the, Ban or on ban or whatever you call it on the web page and that said now hiring editorial so I thought huh um, and then I looked to see where they were located and lo and behold they were like literally 12 minutes from my house wow. and this is Southern California and let me tell you the traffic can be a mess so um, I just took that as a sign from God <laughs> and I you know, polished off my resume and sent it off and um, you know lo and behold I started there um, actually in August of um, whatever, 2005, and then um, as an assistant to an editor. And then a few years later, um, she left and I took over um, one of the other magazines that is, has since been retired, Somerset Memories, which was a scrapbooking magazine. Oh, wow. And it just evolved, the editor of Art Doll left and they offered it to me and I, I had to tell you a funny story because, honest to goodness, I think the dolls, I love art doll. I love, love, love the artist and the dolls. But at that time, 
I was more into like paper crafting and I thought, oh, art dolls, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and I, I realized that the, um, the director of publishing at that time, who was Jenny Doe, another phenomenal woman, um, asked me because I was the, um, the old seasoned person in the, in the office. I work with a lot of wonderful young, young women, but I'm, I'm the old one there. Um, so anyhow, she wanted an older presence as the um, editor. So I said, oh, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. And I gotta tell you, throughout the years, I have come to, to love the people I work with so much. Um, art doll artists are just the kindest, most loving, um, tight-knit community. And uh, it's just been so, so much fun. I've just loved it. And um, everybody's great, just great. So um, that's a little, <laughs> behind the scenes info. Yeah, well, I tell you, uh, uh, doll art community is a very tight community, and they're uh, they're full of support and encouragement, and it's it is it is a bright community, and it's a small yeah. community. It's a small com community, but yet very big. I don't I don't know how to ex how to really explain that, but we uh -huh. uh, we're we're all over the world. It's not uh, just here in North America. And it's just amazing how many people are doing it. How many mm -hmm. people are involved either in DVDs, original art, bones, or whatever, cloth, polymer, you know, paper play. Yeah. There, um, there's just so much of it. And, it's, and there's some absolutely amazing, amazing artists out there mm -hmm. doing this. And, and there are a lot of artists that don't realize how amazing they are. Um, That's true. And a lot of them that I think feel intimidated to submit their art. And one of the the most um, most precious things to me about editing art doll is when I get letters from people and they they thank me. Um, for instance, I had a, a woman several years ago whose art was published in Show and Tell, and she wrote me a beautiful letter just thanking me because she was really going through a difficult time in her life, um, very depressed. Um, you know, just didn't didn't have a lot of self worth and she just took a chance on sending a doll in and the validation that that gave her, I, it makes my heart sore when I hear stories like that about, you know, oh my God, I can't believe you published my doll. I never would have tried. Thank you. Thank you. And, and it gives people the, um, the encouragement to go forward. Um, and then, you know, with the help of your article, Adele, it teaches them, you know, how to get into the sales and marketing and, and really make a, um, you know, a livelihood out of, making dolls and promoting them and selling them so it's like this wonderful little um i don't know domino effect that can just go on and on and on yeah awesome. that is that is so true we yeah you know uh i know that sometimes i think well here i am spending a lot of time doing this but then when the, the rewards are many when people mm -hmm. write me and they get results uh it's just it's not so much for me it's not so much about the money but it's uh, it's much more than that. It's the passion yeah. that I have and that I'm able to pass it on to yeah. another artist for them to be successful. So mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. We have um, Sandy from, uh, I don't know if you're familiar. Sandy might have, Sandy's from Alaska and uh, she's excited about getting your awesome publications. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, Sandy lives in a kind of a remote area, right, Sandy? I'm not sure. I don't want to pronounce the name of your little area there because I might really goof it up, but just <laughs> post it here and I'll, I'll show Jana exactly where you are. I know that she has uh, difficulty uh, getting supplies and things because she's uh, really, I think some of her supplies come in either by plane or by boat. So um, wow. she's waiting for her publication and I'm sure she's excited about that. Uh, so we have people just telling us hello, and uh, I know they really appreciate you coming on and explaining some of the process of being in any of the magazines. Is there um, <clears throat> something else I wanted to ask you? Uh, I had mentioned to you that I do have some painters, uh, oil and acrylic and mixed media. Which of the magazines would you recommend for them to submit to? Um. For painting, I would say Somerset Studio. Um, okay. However, usually the focus, it's, it's more um, mixed media. 
They don't show a lot of really fine art. So usually if it's a, you know, like a watercolor or there's got to be like a couple different medias in there um, mm -hmm. to meet the criteria of the mixed media publication. So I would go for Somerset Studio, but, you know, I just say take a shot and send it in. Yeah, well, you never know, right? It may fit in there. Oh, here's Sandy. She just posted where she is. There she is. Ah, Soldovia. Am I so probably they, saying that wrong? No, <laughs> me too. You see, I didn't want to pronounce it either. Uh, she's, yeah, she's saying here, uh, it's a fishing in native village in Soldovia, Alaska. Okay. Ah. And um, let's see, I have somebody else. Okay, here's somebody else that's commenting. This is kind of lengthy. She says she loves the magazines where women create Willow and Sage. She gets a lot of ideas for her figurative art there, and even from the art, artful blogging, too. Ah, oh, great. Thanks, Gabriella. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, one magazine can give you ideas for something else, and it just, inspiration is so many places. And that's why I love always to hear what the inspiration for a particular doll was, because there's always always a story behind it right mm -hmm. and um, I think the other one too that I'm I, I like I'm partial to is Bella More oh yes yeah. Yeah. yeah that that is just I love that magazine <laughs> it has so many uh, wonderful things to inspire you even like yeah. the Thanksgiving and stuff like that uh, Sandy's saying that the settlement is an old Russian settlement wow so that's interesting I didn't know that Sandy thanks for sharing that yeah, I bet it's beautiful there. Yeah, she uh, talks about it all the time. Uh, really, the wildlife and, you know, how I'm sure it's, I, I've been to Alaska and it is breathtaking. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, air, the air is very pure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I just did, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to look through here real quick to see if there's any other questions. No, I think we're good, Jana. I, I really appreciate you being here, and um, it's, it's just been wonderful. And I, I know that you're probably going to get a lot of submissions. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's hope so, huh? Um, awesome. I'll, yeah, I'll post the upcoming challenges. And, okay. Uh, wait, let's see. I've got one here. Okay, well, here we go. Esther Manzo, she's wanting to thank you. She oh, was, hi, Esther. Yeah, she's Yes, Esther, I saw your piece. Uh, yeah. It was uh, the uh, your hook, my hook. Yes, yeah. I saw him. He was great. Oh, absolutely great. Yeah. Jan has been doing some remarkable work. Um, I was glad to see him in there. And uh, I know she works very hard on on keep working on her art and perfecting it. And so it's uh, – she's – She's really come a long way, and I think I would say in the last year I really have seen a big change in her work. So I'm so I was glad to see that on there. She yeah. said she was thrilled to be in there. Oh, it was a thrill to, to publish you, Esther. Keep yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah, I always tell them keep going. Yeah, yeah we keep, never give up. Yeah, no, we should never give up. So, Jana, I'm going to go ahead and post. Now, where is the best place for them to submit uh, this, uh, the submissions, either for show and tell or for the article? Where is the best place? Um, the best thing to do is to go online to our website. Um, okay. You can go to stampington.com, and we've got a, um, a button to, to click on. It's, I think it's under um, Want to Get Published, and you okay. click on that, and then it'll take you to... Um, It'll take you to all the magazines, so you can look at you know whatever others you might want to submit to too. But um, and that gives the the mailing address, and you know it reminds you to label things and pack well, um, and what to include as far as that. And we always ask people to to make a electronic copy, you know, type it up in a word document of, of your choice, the information that we're wanting, um, your name, your address, your contact info. Um, the title or name of your doll, the height of it, um, what was in, what inspired it, and brief instructions, and print it out and fold it up and put it in with the um, 
the actual submission that you're going to mail. Um, keep a copy in your computer because um, if it's selected, likely, um, you know, I might just contact you and say, hey, can you send that to me? Because um, quite frankly, it's a lot easier cut and paste <laughs> than to transcribe and type everything out. Um, <clears throat> so do that and um, be in good shape. Okay, uh, we have a question from Jennifer, and here it is. She wants to know how extensive is your readership in our doll world? Ah, hi, Jennifer. Um, we have about 15,000 subscribers. Um, it fluctuates, and it you know, depends sometimes on, you know, we'll have sometimes better years than, than um, others. But it's pretty wide, I would say, pretty widespread. Yeah, a lot. Uh, do you get? Do you have a lot of readership in uh, like Europe in the European area? Actually, we do. We have a lot of doll artists. Um, I mean, there's phenomenal artists everywhere, but we have a lot from Poland, Russia, um, Russia, Romania, France. Um, I know I'm forgetting some, but yeah, all over the all over the place. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I, if I remember correctly, the uh, the publication is uh, in print, and also, do you have it electronically too? Um, I, I wasn't. Um, not always. Typically, the way they work is that once um, all the issues, the printed issues, are sold out, then they'll go to digital copies. Okay. okay. That's the way it goes. Okay. Yeah, because I was wondering about that. Uh, I know it's sometimes I had seen it at one time that it was electronic, and it was probably because you, your issues were gone. Right. The printed issues I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, it's been great having you, Jana, and I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's Sunday, but this <laughs> seems to be the best time because everybody, you know, is at home on the weekends and right. uh, to have these talk shows. And, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to see if there was anything else that we might have missed. I think we pretty much covered everything. And uh, thank you again for being here. And I will post uh, the information that you uh, have been offering about publications and also uh, upcoming challenges. Great. Thank you so much, Adele. This has been great fun. And um, thank you to everybody else that's online. It's been great getting to know you and just if anybody has questions shoot me an email at um, artdoll <clears throat> and I'd be happy to answer it. Well good Jana. Uh, you'll also see people commenting because this is being recorded when they do the mm -hmm. replay sometimes they comment and I'm sure you're going to get a copy of it so yeah. you can continue commenting right under the, uh, the replay as well. So yeah. thanks yeah. so much again and we'll be talking to you soon. Okay thanks a lot everybody have a good Sunday. Bye, Jana. Bye.